What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Haunted Beard. Thank you for joining me. Today I want to start a brand new franchise series of reviews and it's time to tackle Child's Play aka Chucky and I'm excited about it and we've got let's see I believe eight films in this series so like usual I'm going to do an individual review for each of the movies and then cap it off with doing my official ranking video. But today Let's kick things off with the original Child's Play from 1988. Here we go. So for me personally, horror movies, for the most part, break down into two major categories. You've got the more kind of serious, dramatic horror films, and then you've got just the more fun, entertaining horror films. And Child's Play clearly belongs in the fun and entertaining horror films. This is not something that takes itself too seriously. It's got a concept that is, of course, pretty ridiculous, but it is a whole lot of fun. So Child's Play starts off, and we learn that serial killer Charles Lee Ray is on the run from the police, and he is, of course, played by Brad Dorif. And you can't really talk about Child's Play without talking about Brad Dorif. Obviously, he is the voice of Chucky, our main slasher antagonist. But this is the only part here where we actually get to see Brad Dorif in person. Even for being on screen for pretty much like five minutes, he really gives us something, I think, pretty memorable. And in just his overall presence and everything is, is quite good. I'm gonna get you, and I'm gonna get Eddie, no matter what! And so given the sort of limited actual physical screen time that Dorif has, I think he utilizes it pretty well in giving us a, a memorable character just in terms of his physical performance. Obviously, his voice work as Chucky is pretty great, and I would even say iconic at this point, but even his physical performance here, I think, sets up a good introduction for the character, and I like seeing Brad Dorif on screen. Obviously, what ends up happening, he ends up in a toy store, and he's about to die from a gunshot wound, but through his sort of voodoo witchcraft knowledge, he is able to transfer himself into the Chucky doll, and thus begins our story. One of the more minor things that I like about Child's Play has to do with the actual set locations. Anytime this movie takes place outside, any sort of exterior shot, this is a very sort of dirty, grungy, seedy part of town wherever they film this. And I just kind of like that aspect. Every time any of the characters are outside, it just feels unsafe and sketchy and, and just like it feels like you're about to get murdered at any moment. We are going to die. I'm out of here. And so I just kind of like that aspect of the movie just as far as the sort of the, the set location and stuff like that. I think it just it works pretty well. After this introduction, we are introduced to our two main characters, Karen, who's the mom, and son, Andy, and it is Andy's birthday, and he wants a Chucky doll for his birthday, but his mom is not able to afford one for him, but eventually she finds a peddler outside the, in the alleyway of her workplace where she's able to buy a Chucky doll for him at a discounted price, and of course, it happens to be the doll that is possessed by Charles Lee Ray. I can't talk about Child's Play without talking about the practical effects, namely the doll work from Chucky the Doll. It's pretty fantastic, and I think it is just great. I think they utilize the doll very effectively. Again, this is, it's a silly concept. It's a killer doll, but they sell it really well, and you actually feel the sort of evil presence of this thing. He feels like a legitimate threat. It doesn't just feel like some child's toy that you could just at any moment literally punt out the window and be done with it. No, it actually feels like this living serial killer who just happens to be two feet tall. But they just do a really effective job creating the doll, using the practical effects effectively, and it's, it's just phenomenal. And it's fun too to watch movies sometimes that were made really before the birth of modern day CGI where you couldn't really cut corners. You couldn't really fake something with a computer generated effect. You had to actually make it real. And Child's Play is another example of that. Specifically the scene where Detective Mike is finally attacked by Chucky in his squad car. Good night, asshole. And it's just a great scene because 
you know that there is an actual stunt driver in the car doing all these maneuvers and tactics and stuff and it's just a whole lot of fun to watch because like they really had to crash the car they really had to flip the car there's no cgi fakery and it just feels real and authentic because of that and so there's an aspect about some of these movies that sometimes yes they feel dated but also too because they're dated there's an aspect of them that feels real and authentic because they actually had to do these things and weren't allowed to, again, take sort of computer shortcuts. I read a bit of trivia on this that the original screenplay from Don Mancini, they actually toyed with the idea of kind of making it a little more mysterious to the audience, suggesting that maybe Andy really was the killer instead of Chucky. And I think there was a little bit of a missed opportunity there. I wish they kind of would have leaned into that sort of mystery a little bit more. I do like, however, that they, they do show kind of some restraint in regards to the character of Chucky, that as the audience, you, you pretty much know he's the killer. So I do think that was a good decision to kind of hold off on showing us you know, Chucky unleashed, right, up until you get to the halfway point of the movie. And Child's Play just has a handful of really fun scenes that I had a smile on my face throughout while watching them. And the first one that I like is the kill of Maggie. And I just, I again, kind of like how that they kind of, it's sort of this art of suggestion a little bit like we pretty much know it's Chucky but they don't really show it and then you get this just gnarly hammer to the head and her falling out and falling down however many stories onto a car again another nice little practical effect that's done that looks great Of course, the scene where you finally get Chucky's big reveal is phenomenal. I just like the whole build-up to it, to where the mom uncovers the batteries out of the box, and then she realizes that he hasn't had batteries in him the whole time. There's just kind of some nice suspense in that scene, and I was just smiling throughout this entire scene. It's just phenomenal. And she finally picks it up, is about to throw it in the fire, and then Chucky just comes alive. What a great introduction to that character. It's just a whole lot of fun. I also think the kills in Child's Play are pretty good as well. I do like the kill of Eddie, even though you don't see it specifically, but I like the explosion. And again, I can't help but just like acknowledge the, again, real effect of this. This is not a computer generated explosion. They actually destroyed this house brick and all. And I don't know, there's just something about that. I was like, holy cow, they actually took down this entire building. It's just cool. It just adds, again, that sort of authenticity to it. I like the kill of the doctor where he gets his brain fried. I like the kill of the voodoo guy where Chucky's stabbing the voodoo doll and breaking his legs and stuff like that. Sure, how do you want it? Broken leg? Oh! Uh, there's just kind of some v variety and, and some creativity with the kills. I think they're pretty solid. I also like the fact that the main target is a six-year-old boy. The whole thing is that Chucky has got to get out of the doll back into a kid, and he's trying to take over a six-year-old kid's body. Anytime you can involve a kid in something, it just kind of makes it that much more scary, and I like that decision. Speaking of the kid, though, one of the things that they do in this movie that I couldn't help but kind of laugh at how just insane it was is that when they decide to kind of take Andy away from his mom and, and put him up for, like, doctor evaluation, like, he's sitting there, a six-year-old kid, in his own locked cell. And it's just, it's so insane to me, because it's like, it looks like he just stepped onto the set of, like, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Like, he's in this institution for the criminally insane. It's a six-year-old kid. He's in his own locked cell. It's crazy. Well, let's start the insanity. <laughs> Giddy up. <laughs> then we get to the ending of this movie, and the last 15 minutes of this are just a blast. They're just a whole lot of fun, and I thoroughly enjoy the ending of this, where we get the Chucky versus Andy, Detective Mike, and Karen showdown in their apartment. Again, the practical effects work here, the doll work here, I think is just pretty fantastic and just believable. Uh, I love that we get to see Chucky lit on fire. And so then you just get this melted version of Chucky as he's still going after them is great. I love that they give Andy a tough guy line. This is the end, friend. <laughs> 
I love the little subtle reference to The Shining where Karen's guarding the door and Chucky's trying to stab her through the door. I think that's fun. I love that Chucky resurrects twice and it's like you just can't kill him. And then I like the little bit of the ambiguous note that it ends on where it literally <laughs> leaves the door open. It's like, is he really dead? Eh, maybe not. And obviously he isn't. But look, Child's Play is, is just... It's a fun time, and, and I enjoy it. I have a good time with it. There's a lot to appreciate if you can get on board with the concept. Of course, it's a ridiculous concept, but they pull it off pretty effectively. We get, I think, a pretty iconic slasher villain in Chucky, get some really top-notch practical effects, and some good kills. And so I have a good time with Child's Play. So my overall grade for this, I'm going to go... I guess just in terms of like entertainment, I'm going to go seven and a half out of 10. So those are my thoughts on Child's Play. Hit me up down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Would love to hear from you. Up next, Child's Play 2. I hope you'll join me on the journey as I make my way through the Child's Play franchise. If you like videos like this, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you next time on The Haunted Beard.